Hi, my name is Bochad Rahmedev. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the sedimentation during centrifugation. In particular, we're going to discuss about the Svedberg equation, which is going to tell us the rate at which the particles are going to sediment to the bottom of a tube. We'll try to derive this equation and try to interpret this equation. So for now, if you remember in our previous video lecture, we discussed about the movement of an object around a circle, and we discussed lots of physical quantities in this process. And one of the important ones is called the Capparin centrifugal force, which can be calculated by multiplying the mass of the object to the radial acceleration. Where the radial acceleration can be calculated in two different ways. One way is multiplying the angular velocity in the square times the radius, or the linear velocity in the square divided to the radius. So essentially, the centrifugal force pulls the particles out from the circle towards to the bottom of the tube. So now, when we put a particle into the tube with some fluid and try to rotate this, there are other forces are going to interact with the particles at the same time as uh, with, the, with the centrifugal force. And again, the centrifugal force tries to pull the particle uh, out from the circle towards to the bottom of the tube. And there is another force, which is called like a bouillon force, which tries to push the particle to the top of the tube in the direction of the center of the rotation. So while the bouillon force is coming from the Archimedes principle, the great mathematician and the scientist, which basically states that an object which is partially or completely put to the fluid tends to float to the top. So you might probably have heard about the this famous story of the Archimedes when he uh, when he reportedly proclaimed every car. Erika when he's figured out this principle. So again, another force which basically pushed the particle towards the center of the rotation is called like a frictional force. So essentially, as the centrifugal force put, pull the particle towards the bottom of the tube, the fluid is going to resist this particle to that movement. And this resistance is actually proportional to the frictional force. So the scientists who have, uh, who have put all of these interactions of the forces into an elegant mathematical formula was Theodor Svedberg, the Swedish mathematician who has developed this equation and also developed the instrumentation, which is called the like ultracentrifugation, which basically is enabled to sediment, so is separate the particles with a really tiny, tiny difference in terms of the mass or the density. So for his development and the inventions, he was awarded by the Nobel Prize in 1926. Well, we will try to derive this equation. So again, so, in the, uh, so I would like to write down all of these forces, and we need to keep the balance between the three forces. And again, if you see that the centrifugal force is tends to the one direction, and the beyond and the frictional force are tend to the other direction. Right? So that is why like a F minus F bouillon minus F friction should be equal to the zero. Now I would like to write down the description of each of the forces. So, and again, so the centrifugal force, as we did before, can be calculated by multiplying the mass of a particle, which is a radial acceleration, which is equal to the angular velocity in the square times the radius. So the bouillon force is calculated as the weight of the fluid displaced by a particle times to the radial acceleration. And the frictional force is essentially the friction coefficient, which depends on the fluid or the particle, times to the velocity at which we're rotating this tube on a centrifuge. So I would like to just put all of this, like a description of the forces, this description, this description, and this description into the equation and try to simplify the terms out. So if you put all of these terms to here, we'll get roughly this equation. So now I would like to put all of the description of these forces together into one equation. And here, first of all, I need to write down what does it mean, this M displacement. The weight of the fluid displaced by a particle was the mass M can be calculated by multiplying the mass of the particle times the ratio of the 
uh, ratio of the um, densities of the fluid to the density of the particle. So at the same time, I'm going to rewrite this equation in a slightly different way by multiplying the m to the rho v bar, where this rho and this row are the same, so this is rho. The row of the fluid has been written, rewritten just without the sub subscription. So subscription and the v bar is being called as a specific volume, can be simply calculated by dividing uh, 1 to the rho of the particle, the density of the particle. So this is simply the reciprocal of the density of the particle. So, well, what I want is I would like to put all of this together and try to simplify the equation out. So let's do this together. So I'm going to write as m omega n squared times the radius minus m rho v bar times the omega n squared times the radius, right? Minus the f v, the frictional coefficient, times the velocity, okay? So from here, if you see that there are lots of terms are equal, right? So m v squared r is here, and I have m v squared omega squared r here as well. So I would like to take them out from the brackets. It's going to be m omega square r times the 1 minus rho v bar is equal to f times the v. Okay? So now what I want is I would like to sort. So you see so lots of physical quantities in this equation. I would like to sort them by some logic. So let me solve this first of all. Or I will try to figure, uh, I will try to make the sort the order of these physical quantities according to this Fedberg equation, for example. So it's going to be 1 minus rho v bar times the mass divided to the f, the friction coefficient, is going to be equal to the v divided to the omega in the square times to the r. And this quantity actually is also called as the Svedberg's constant. Okay, or the sedimentation constant, which can be, uh, so w w which has the units in terms of the Svedbergs. So one Svedberg is equivalent to the 10 in the part of minus 13 seconds. We'll come back to this in a moment. So now what I want is I would like to try to figure out here in this equation, in this line, we've got lots of physical quantities. And we've decided to solve them exactly in this order. So the three physical quantities have been put to the right hand side part and the rest have been put in the left hand side part of the equation. And the reason is that this part, the, all of the quantities at this part is about the machine, it's about the instrumentation, of the, uh, it's about the centrifuge, right? So it's essentially it's about how fast we're rotating this, what is the radius of the centrifuge and so on. While all of the quantities in this part, in the left hand side part, it's about the particle. So this is the m is the mass of the particle. The v bar is the reciprocal of the density of the particle. Rho is the density of the fluid. F is the frictional co coefficient, which also depends on the fluid and the particle, right? So you see, so we put all the physical quantities dependent on the sample and the solution, right? So on the right hand side part, we've got all of the physical quantities is about the machine which is basically constant, right? So we're, we might change the particles, different. We, we might test different particles in the same machine, and these quantities for the machine are going to be the same. So now let's try to interpret this equation. So I've got the, the Svedberg equation, which basically tells you what is the sedimentation coefficient. So the sedimentation coefficient is nothing else as the rate of a particle uh, at which it sediments to the bottom of the tube. So and again, if the S is higher or bigger and bigger, it means that the particles are going to sediment to the bottom of the tube faster and faster. So you see, so the sedimentation coefficient depends on lots of parameters. So it depends on the mass of a particle, it depends on the, the density of the fluid, it depends on the density of the particle. It depends on the frictional coefficient, or basically the shape of the particle. So now let's try to figure out how exactly those parameters of a particle and a fluid are going to influence to the sedimentation coefficient. So let's start from the mass. So higher. So you can see from this equation is that the higher the mass, higher the, the sedimentation coefficient. So essentially, if you've just got two particles, 
with equal density and with equal shape. So essentially, they are going to have the same friction and coefficient, right? But with a different mass. So let's say the red particle has the mass m, the, the capital M, and the blue particle is going to have this small m. So basically, obviously, the, the red particle has the higher mass. So could you please tell me for which of the particles the sedimentation coefficient is going to be higher? So obviously for the red one, right? So that's why the red particle is going to sediment faster. So this is what does it mean in this equation. So the higher the mass, higher the sedimentation coefficient, higher the rate at which the particle sediment to the bottom of the tube. So now let's look how the shape of the particles are going to affect the to the, to the sedimentation coefficient. So now if you've got two particles with the same mass, with the same density, but a different shape, then the shape which has the smaller frictional coefficient is going to sediment much faster. So essentially, for example, this the blue one, which has a spherical shape, is going to have a smaller resistance with the fluid, right? So that's why the frictional coefficient for the spherical one is going to be smaller, right? And according to this equation, the sedimentation coefficient is going to be higher. So it means that a spherical particle is going to tend to uh, is, is going to move to the uh, to the bottom of the tube much faster. So it was compared with the another particle with the same mass, with the same density, but with a different shape. So this is essentially this frictional coefficient is essentially is going to tell us how the shape of the particles are going to um, are going to affect the sedimentation rate. So now let's look to the density of the particle, which is not so like a obvious from here. So more dense particles move quicker to the bottom of the tube than the ones with the less dense. So it's not so obvious to see this from here. So and again, so if you remember, the omega uh, v bar is equal to the one over the density of the particle, right? Okay, so the higher the density of the particle, the lower the v bar, right? So at the same time now, it doesn't mean that the sedimentation coefficient is going to be lower. So lower the v-bar, so now we are put all of these particles in the same conditions, right? So essentially everything is equal, the density of the fluid, the mass, the shape are the same, but the only difference between the two particles is the, is the density. So you basically have got one particle with the row one, and another particle was the row two, and you would like to try to understand for which of the particles the sedimentation coefficient is going to be higher or smaller. If, for example, the row one is higher than the row two, okay? So now you see, so if the row one is higher than the row two, then the V bar one, so sorry, let me draw this with the red one. So V one bar is going to be smaller than V bar two, right? Because they are inversely proportional. But at the same time, if you see, so I'm subtracting this value V bar from the one, okay? The smaller the v bar, then the bigger than this, the, the bigger this value is becoming. For example, if the v bar is equal to the 0 0.5, then 1 minus 0 0.5 is going to be equal to the 0 0.5, for example. And if the value of the v2 bar is equal to the 0 0.7, then 1 minus 0 0.7 is becoming 0 0.3, isn't it? So it means that the the, the particle was the smaller V1, uh, V bar, is going to have the higher sedimentation coefficient. So essentially the sedimentation coefficient for this particle is going to be higher than the sedimentation coefficient for, for this particle. So there is no bar. Uh, yes, obviously. Okay, so again, so the, the higher the density, higher the density means that the lower the V bar, the lower the v-bar here means that this value, 1 minus v-bar, is going to be higher. The higher this bracket means that the higher the sedimentation coefficient. So at the end, that if, your, if your particle have the higher density, it's going to sediment at the higher rate. If you are going to compare this with another particle with the same, under the same condition.
So there's the loss in physical quantity, which affects the sedimentation coefficient, which is essentially the fluid's density root. Okay, so essentially, if you remember, the V bar is nothing else as the reciprocal of the of the of the density of the particle. So the V bar times the rho can be written as the rho of the fluid divided to the rho of the particle. Right? So when it is equal to the one, it means that the density of the particle is equal to the density of the fluid, right? So that is why this term simply is becoming equal to the zero. It means that the particle is not going to move. It's not going to sediment, okay? So the sedimentation coefficient is also becoming equal to the zero. So now let's consider another situation when uh, V bar times the omega is greater than one. It's greater than one. What does it mean? It means that this number on the numerator is greater than the number in the denominator. So essentially, the density of a fluid is higher than the density of the particle. Or So we can rephrase this by saying that, hey, the particle's density is less than the, the density of the fluid. So in this case, if this term now is bigger than 1, then the sedimentation coefficient is becoming a negative value, right? So one minus a number, which is more than one, is going to be negative value. It means that the particle is going to float to the top of the T. And again, if the density of the particle is smaller than the density of the fluid, then this value is becoming more than one. So that is why the sedimentation coefficient is becoming negative. It means that the particles float to the top. So, and the, there is a third scenario at which the rho of the fluid divided to the rho of the particle is less than one. It means that the particle's density is higher now than the density of the fluid, right? And this value now is smaller than one, so that is why the sedimentation coefficient is going to be positive, right? So the higher the density of the particle, then this ratio is going to be smaller and smaller times to go to the zero. So that's why the sedimentation coefficient is going to be higher. So here, actually, this equation, which basically is really powerful, which basically tells you how the particles are going to sediment to the top, to the bottom of the tube, depending on their mass, density, shape, or the density of the fluid. So this is essentially the sedimentation principles during the centrifugation. So in our next video lectures, we're going to talk about the applications of the centrifugation and the, uh, and, and the separations of the particles. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope this video was very helpful for you.